Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. It is a pleasure to have you joining us for worship this morning. Today is the last Sunday in the season of Lent. Next week is Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. Let's begin our service. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in these words, we now take a moment of silence to reflect on our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only Son, Jesus, to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now read our intro for today. The bulk of what we will read will come from select verses from Psalm 116. The opening and closing verse that we'll read, that's what we call the antiphon. That will come from Psalm 43, verse 1. We'll read responsively, and your words are found in bold on the screen. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears. My feet from stumbling. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning with verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. 
and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. The author of Hebrews writes, Every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, Jesus began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. After three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, May the words of my mouth 
May the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How would you react if I were to tell you this morning that I was dying? If I were to stand up here this morning and tell you that I was dying from some terrible cancer or other illness, I had only months left to live, how would you respond to that? What would you be thinking about? How would you feel? What would you say? Those questions give us the context for this morning's gospel reading. In today's gospel reading, Jesus tells the 12 disciples, his closest friends, that he is about to die. He says, soon I will be betrayed. I'll be arrested. I will be dragged before the Romans. I'll be mocked. I'll be spit upon. I'll be beaten. And then I'll be killed. Now Jesus also mentions his resurrection. He says, and on the third day, rise again. But the disciples don't seem to pay attention to that part. So we'll focus here on the death part. Jesus has just dropped some heavy, heavy news on his closest friends. He's told them that he's about to die. How do his friends respond to that news? Well, for James and John, it appears to have gone in one ear and out the other. They seem completely oblivious to what Jesus has just said. Instead, they come up to Jesus and they say, Hey, Jesus, can you do us a favor? James and I, we would like to have those positions of honor, those positions of power at your left and your right when you establish your kingdom. Jesus has just told his closest friends that he is about to die. And all James and John seem to be concerned with is who will get to enjoy the power that comes with being Jesus' second and third in command. Now, do you see how absurd this is? Where are the tears? Where is the sympathy? Why aren't James and John concerned for their friend who just said he's about to die? Instead of being concerned for Jesus, James and John seemed more concerned about themselves. And so Jesus says to James and John, he says, guys, I don't think you know what you're asking for. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm going to drink? Are you able to receive the baptism that I will be baptized into? And overconfidently, foolishly, James and John say, yes, we're able. And I say foolishly because I don't think James and John realize what it is that they're saying. You see, the cup that Jesus is about to drink, that's the cup of suffering. And the baptism that Jesus is about to receive, that's his death on the cross. Certainly, James and John would rather not drink from that cup or receive that baptism. But Jesus, knowing what's to come, says, you know what? You're right. You are going to drink from my cup. You're going to suffer because of me. You will receive my baptism. You're going to be persecuted and then put to death because of me. But as far as those positions of power that you're asking about, those are not mine to give away. Those positions belong to those who have been appointed 
to those positions. Now at this point, the other ten disciples, they learn about James and John's request, and now they are very upset. Now all twelve are fighting over these positions of power. Jesus stops the disciples and he says, hold on just a minute. You all know that the Gentiles love chasing after power. They're always seeking positions of power. But that's not how it should be with you guys. Instead, you should seek to be a servant, a slave to all. Even I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. The disciples' heads, they are not in the right place. Jesus has just told them about his approaching death on the cross, and they're fighting over positions of power. So what does Jesus do? He takes them back to the cross. He says, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. I have come, Jesus says, to die. To die on the cross. Jesus always brings us back to the cross. Every time your head or your heart is in the wrong place. Every time your thoughts are in the wrong place. Every time your desires are in the wrong place, Jesus brings you back to the cross where he becomes your servant. You know, when James and John asked about those positions of power, what did Jesus say about those positions? He said, those are not mine to give away. They belong to those uh, who have been appointed for those positions. The idea here is you don't ask for those positions. God the Father chooses who gets those positions. He appoints people to those positions. You don't ask about them. We get the same kind of language in our reading from Hebrews today. In today's reading, the author of Hebrews is talking about the Old Testament Levitical priesthood. Now, these men held a high position amongst God's people. These men had positions of power. Author of Hebrews tells us that it was the job of the priest to offer sacrifices to God on behalf of the people. But before they could offer those sacrifices, the priest, he first had to offer sacrifices for his own sins. That's because he too was a sinner. Author of Hebrews tells us that no one in the Old Testament sought after that position. No one sought after that honor because no one was worthy of that honor. We're all sinners. Instead, the priests were appointed to their position by God himself. Just as God appointed the first Levitical priest, Aaron, in the book of Exodus. Well, then the author of Hebrews tells us that Jesus did the same thing. Now, Jesus... He is no sinner, right? He's sinless. He's perfect. He is deserving and worthy of the honor of being a priest. But he did not seek that position of power. He did not seek to fill the office of being a priest. Instead, he was appointed to his position by his heavenly father. Author of Hebrews says, even though Jesus was God's own son, meaning that he was an heir, meaning that he was entitled to all of his heavenly father's blessings. Instead, he became a servant. He became a slave by suffering and dying. Jesus is a servant. He's our servant. That's who he is. Jesus is a God who serves. And if we are then going to be a people who follow Jesus, then we are called to be a people who serve. In your daily living, you are called to serve others. You are called to serve your boss by being a faithful employee. 
You are called to serve your employees by being a faithful boss. You are called to serve your husband or your wife by being a faithful spouse. You are called to serve your parents by being a faithful child. You are called to serve your children by being a faithful parent. You are called to serve others in your community by being a faithful neighbor. As followers of Christ, we are all called to serve others. But you know what? Sometimes your heart, your head is in the wrong place. Sometimes, instead of being concerned for your neighbor, you're just concerned for yourself. Just like James and John. What does Jesus do? He brings you back to the cross. Time and time again, Jesus brings you back to the cross where he becomes your servant. He brings you back to the cross where he sheds his precious blood for the forgiveness of your sins. He brings you back to the cross where he continues to claim you as your, his own. Every time you sin, every time your head and your heart are in the wrong place, Jesus brings you back to the cross where he willingly serves you. You have been served today. Every time you gather for worship and hear God's word proclaimed, Jesus comes to you to serve you, to forgive you, to heal you, to save you. You have been served today. Now go and serve others. Amen. I now invite you to join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in these Lenten days, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us to write your word on our hearts, that we might know you as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. Help us not, Lord, our authority over one another, but humbly serve one another in our homes, communities, and congregation as Christ has so humbly served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look in mercy on all those to whom you have given earthly authority. Guard them from the temptation to lord it over us improperly, that they might faithfully serve according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you watch over, protect, and defend us through the service of others. Bless, we pray, the men and women who serve in our military, police forces, and all emergency services who, like your Son, are often called on to lay down their lives for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your only begotten Son learned obedience through what he suffered, we pray that you would bless, sustain, and relieve all who suffer in our midst, that walking the way of the cross with your Son, they may know the fullness of his eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, 
through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, you have delivered our souls from death, our eyes from tears, and our feet from stumbling. Comfort all who mourn with this truth, that they may not grieve as others do who have no such hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. That concludes our service for the last Sunday in the season of Lent. Next week is Holy Week. So let's talk about the schedule. This coming Wednesday... We have one final Wednesday night Lenten service. Again, our series has been Places of the Passion. We've been touring different places that play a significant role in the Passion of account and learning about what they teach us about the story of salvation. I want to encourage you to join us for that service. We'll be meeting here Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you're not able to join us in person, we will also have service posted online. And then Holy Week. Next Sunday, Palm Sunday, uh, we will have our regular 9 o'clock service. Then Maundy Thursday, that's Thursday, April 1st, 6 p.m., we are having a Seder meal service. Now, because there's food to prepare for that service, uh, we are asking people to RSVP. You can do so in our fellowship hall, but if you need to do it via email, just shoot me an email and... Uh, I can get you written down. My email address, again, Pastor Tim C O C. So that's all one word lowercase P A S T O R T I M C O C at gmail.com. Then on Friday, April 2nd, we will have our Good Friday service. That will be at 7 p.m. And then Sunday, April 4th, Easter Sunday, service at 9 a.m. with a brunch following. We hope that you'll join us for all of those services. If you cannot join us in person, we will also have services posted online. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.